Well, did, you did ranching, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I and I don't talk about it a whole lot because there isn't much to say, but I was in the solid waste business for 25 years. Oh, wow. But while I was doing that, I was doing ranching at the same time. I'd, I'd go into the garbage company and, you know, work in the office until two or three in the afternoon, and then I'd go saddle my horse and go chase cows around. <laughs> <laughs> so ranching was therapy. Oh, yeah. It still is. <laughs> you still you still do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, we, we still raise cows and, uh, and, you know, put up hay. I just, I love all that stuff. My daughter asked me a while back, she said, Dad, when are you going to retire? And I said, when I die. <laughs> right. Good answer. I like it. <laughs> My dad, you, you, you say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> well, that's yeah. the funny thing, too. Everybody talks about retirement and stuff, and I'm like, I don't quite understand what you're talking about. You mean you just want to give up on everything? Or... You know, I mean, I, it's like, it just means you shift into something else in my mind. You know, it's like, if you're not doing something, you're dead. So you're always, well, doing yeah. I'll just say from, from my perspective, retirement for me would be being able to work on the stuff that I want to work on. I would never stop working exactly. on stuff. Right. Just, just not for somebody else, you know? I, I get the feeling yeah. when retirement means get an RV and drive across the country for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, that, that wouldn't yeah, be bad either, but I think I'd get bored eventually, you know? Yeah, that's what I, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. We used to go, when I was in that solid waste business, we'd go to my wife and put a hard in the winter for a week or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm a beach bum for four days and then I got to get out of here. Right, <laughs> right. That, you know, it's, it's very interesting, but the one thing why I love Oregon is because I get the mountains, which is where my wife grew up, or the hills. Out here, it's hills. It's not like Colorado mountains, but um, but it's so easy to go to the beach, and it's not like I can kind of do either or from where I'm at, and it's like, you know, an hour in any direction, and you can do anything. And in Colorado, it's the mountains. And in Florida, you're locked on the beach. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel like with Oregon, I feel like I'm lucky because I kind of get a little bit of everything. Good spot. Yeah. It's, I know it's, uh, my, my first wife and I, we, we finally gave it up because she, she was from the eastern shore. And she, she grew up with the water and missed the water. Yeah. And I said, well, you go live in the water. I'm going to stay here in the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i do i do feel that the hills the mountains the hills definitely give me a comfort you know it's nice when you're up in there yeah it's I, like you I, got a cloak of safety wrapped around you yeah yeah you know another thing tony that's interesting i mean you live out so it's different but like i live right near thunder bowl right near the water tower there's a couple homes up there that's where where i last lived up there and I remember walking home from the bus because it would drop me off on Island and I'd walk up the road to my house and I'd look up and I could literally see the Milky Way so clear. I could see billions of stars. I could easily see the space station moving across, moving around. And when I last went up there, I couldn't, I mean, I could see stars and I could see stuff, but it felt like there was a lot more light pollution and I couldn't quite see it wasn't as impactful as it was as I remembered when I was a kid. I remember a couple years ago, we went on a hut trip up, uh, I can't remember now, uh, um, Pueblo Nato. But I was pointing out constellations to people that were like, wow, you can really see those up here. <laughs> you know? Mm. And I'm like, yeah, you used to be able to see these from town. That was a lot of fun growing up, just staring at the sky, you know. I remember that in high school. We, we'd always watch for UFOs and whatever else, you know. It's, uh, we get a lot of that out of Oh, yeah. Rap. Yeah, you lay there at night and count the falling stars. Yep. I also, you know, there's a lot of interesting things, too, because I remember Flynn, Mike Flynn, took us out, was our astronomy meteorology guy, and he'd take us outside and show us, so we'd put the books on the table and he'd say, okay, these are the plateaus. And he'd show us how they developed and how the, how the, the glacier 
deposit kind of left different plateaus and that it was all because of the different levels. And it was really interesting to sort of see. And then a few years later, I was up on a hike up Maroon Bells and you could see the rock spray things on the actual bells themselves from the rock sliding across. And it was, it's, it's kind of interesting when you get to see stuff at that level. You know, you hear about it in stories like Jack London, but when you go see it and you're in it, it's kind of cool. Yeah, and it really helped to have a good guide like Mike Flynn. Yeah. Explain that stuff. 